welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, hopefully you are watching me in black and white so that you don't get a preview of exactly how this look looks in glorious Technicolor. This is a very special film. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be invited to take part in what is quite possibly the greatest show on YouTube. It is, we think, possibly the largest group of beauty YouTubers or beauty influencers coming together in a collaboration all doing the same thing. We don't think collabs of this size have ever happened before. We're not even sure if they'll ever happen again. But what we do know is that we have all put our heart and soul into our looks and you're going to have an awful lot of inspiration if you have the palette that we've used because you are going to have so many different looks using so many different shades from the palette. Now the palette in question is if you haven't already seen the thumbnail, the title and the description is of course the Blush Tribe Paulina palette. Now we did a palette bingo with this, but we did a palette bingo with a bit of a twist. We all have to use the Paulina shade and then can generate four other numbers on random.org to choose which other shades from this palette we will be using to make our look. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours I got and you want to see this look in beautiful, glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, Put your feet up, because here comes my contribution to the collaboration playlist. Enjoy! Hey! Welcome back from the intro. Looking a little different, huh? With my unicorn horn, which is spongy, and then flowers, and then little veil just because I felt like it really and because this is actually a really really special film a group of it started off as quite a small group and it has grown exponentially uh, to the size that it is now um, a group of us got together at the height of the Tarty, James, Jeffrey Star, backstabby, beauty guru, scandal type time. Because we were getting so fed up of these bigger beauty gurus, for want of a better word, bringing the beauty community into disrespect, because that's effectively what they were doing. Um, people were saying, oh, the beauty community is all backstabby, the beauty community is this, the beauty community is that. And we're like, no, that's, that's just the top few that are like that. The beauty community is like an iceberg. You see the little bit on the top, but there's a load of us underneath, particularly the mini and the micro um, influencers. I mean, I would class myself as a micro influencer because I haven't even got a thousand subscribers yet. 
Um, I think once you're over sort of 10,000 subscribers, you then become a micro influencer, and once you get to half a million, you become you, you starting once you get over the half a million, heading towards the million, you're starting to become more towards the top of that iceberg. But you know, it's still nowhere near the 16, 15, 13, and 10 millions that are at the top. But there's an awful lot of us, particularly the micro community, that have got, as I said, in my case, less than a thousand, but in most cases, less than 5,000 subscribers. And we support each other, we help each other, we collab with each other without any backstabbing. And we are a community as the beauty community was when it first came on to YouTube and all of us absolutely love Paulina from Paulina's Beauty. We all also love Blush Tribe and Blush Tribe has recently bought back the Paulina palette it was originally a very, very small release, done in collaboration with Paulina. But she got so many requests to bring it back. She said, right, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. She discussed it with Paulina. Paulina asked her audience what they thought. And the majority of them said, like me, yeah, if people missed out first time round because they didn't have the money or whatever, then absolutely bring it back for them because we didn't buy it because it's one of only 500 released. We bought it because we like Paulina and wanted to support her. We like Blush Tribe and wanted to support them. And we liked the colour story. Let me show you the colour story if you haven't already seen it. I mean, people who know me know. You know, if, if there were some blues in there as well, this would be my absolute perfect palette. But green, purple, pink... I'm a happy girly. Um, and it's all named after... The, one of the shades in here is actually called Paulina. And that was in the Full Fusion palette. Because both Paulina and Angelica Nyquist had a shade named after them. I mean, I'm lucky enough that uh, Blush Tribe have actually named a, um, a pigment after me. She does that a lot. Not just with the big influencers but if you are a regular shopper with her a regular customer who's always supported her for you know a while you get shades named after you so this particular neon pigment this gorgeous orangey red is actually named Angie and when it came out I actually put on the Instagram post oh my goodness I can pretend it's named after me and Salma the lady that owns Blush Tribe said uh, it is named after you which made me fall off my chair and instantly press the buy button even quicker than I already was. Um, so she regularly names colours after her customers and I know with the Full Fusion palette she sent that out to Paulina and to Angelica. They both sent back suggestions on shades they would change and what they would put in their place um, which they would then find a more cohesive palette. So because of that because of their help, Salma named two shades after them. Um, I actually have a discount code with Blush Tribe, which is BOMBER in caps, same as all of my others. Gives you 10% discount on everything except sale items once you hit your £10 mark. Um, I don't earn from it, it's non-affiliated, but it, if it encourages you to go and support a UK indie brand, and saves you the money, particularly if you're in America and you're worried about shipping charges and stuff because you're so lucky over there with your free shipping that you get with pretty much everything. Um, if that 10% discount is going to be what it takes to encourage you to buy from her, then I'm going to plug it all I can. But that's not what this is about. This is... We decided to call it a collaboration as opposed to a collaboration. Because there are a lot of this, I'm not going to list everybody because if we get anybody joining later, I'm going to feel so upset that I've missed them. There is a playlist 
linked in my description box below. I don't think I'm going to be able to link all of the channels because I think it's going to come up that the description box is too large. But um, I'm going to see if there's a way that I can link. I know uh, Nikki did my YouTube wifey, Nikki Raven. She did a couple of um, Google documents where she listed all the channels, uh, including Instagram channels as well. So I'll see if I can put the link to that in there as well. Because uh, obviously you're going to need to know it for the ones that don't have YouTube, that, that, that won't have a film, that, that will have Instagram. But there will be a playlist so you can go and, and just basically indulge. Now, we decided we were going to do a palette bingo where everybody has to use the shade Paulina, which is this gorgeous pink. And we would then use random.org to produce four numbers for us to use in conjunction with Paulina to create our look. And when I did my random four numbers, I got number two, which is Sigge, which is her dog. Love that. And then I got number seven, which is Salma, which is the lady that runs Blush Tribe. Nice purple shimmer. Happy with that. And then I got number nine, which is Aubergine, or Aubergine, as uh, Paulina pronounces it. So I'm like, oh yeah, that bottom row is going to work really well together. Happy with that. Had my fingers crossed that I was going to get one of the other three greens up here to go with Sige. And I got number one, which is Friends, which I've got to be honest, it's my favourite shade in the palette. So I was super, super happy. Now what I have done, I have swatched them for you. Obviously Paulina is across the top here. And then you've got Friends, Sige, okay, Salma, and Aubergine. So you can see I've got a really nice actually a really cohesive I've been super super lucky um, when I've done my randoms just recently for palette bingos I've been super lucky that I've pulled something which I can instantly see yes I know what I'm going to do with that um, now I'm a teaching channel so I probably will have longer videos than most people and because there are so many channels that you're going to be watching I will completely understand if you speed me up. In fact, I'm fully expecting you all to speed me up. Um, but if you are a beginner and you want to then come back later and re-watch the film, you can do so at normal speed and know that I'll talk you through each stage. Uh, my chronic pain also stops me from blending too quickly. So, right, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I have two primers on today. I have the um, No Problem Primer and my usual antiperspirant primer. Details of this are linked in my description box. Let's get zoomed in. When I say zoomed in, I mean zoomed in. All that I've got on my eyes at the moment is the Crow and Pebble White Eyeshadow Base in shade Cotton. Uh, I've actually got a discount with them as well, Bomber All Caps, 15% on everything except sale stuff. And again, I don't earn from that. Um, they do, they've got six different eyeshadow shades. Eyeshadow shades? Eye primer shades. Um, the deepest two being uh, a deep chocolate brown and a black. So you will absolutely be able to find a colour that works for you. Um, I will just quickly talk you through eye shapes because I do this on all my films. Feel free to skip forward if you're a regular and you know what I'm going to say. I've got deep set eyes which are often mistaken as being hooded eyes. So I just want to explain to you the difference because there are differences. Um, when I look ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much of it but you can see it. So I don't have a hooded lid. 
It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of your lid that you have hooded lids. Um, you either have a part hooded lid where it just covers the outside or you'll have a full hood or a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. Get a brush something like this and on your static lid create either a half crease if only half of your eye is covered or a full crease if all of your lid is covered. That will then, you're basically creating a mobile lid on your static lid. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your static lid and your brow so just use slightly smaller brushes than me. The reason people with deep set or they're also called double lidded eyes mistakenly believe or are mistakenly informed they have hooded lids is because we suffer the same thing. We get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. When we're cutting our crease we can't just follow our socket, we have to go up onto the upper lid as well and even when using glitter glues we'll lose the glitter through this bit. Let me show you why. If I cover my mobile lid, my visible mobile lid, and then close my eye you can see as much lid again folds back in. And if I cover my static lid and do the same, you can see again I've got lid there that folds back in. So that's why you get the transference onto the upper lid because those two bits of lid rubbing together. Okay. Right, it's time to put some colour on finally. Um, I'm going to start with, I think, I'm going to start with Sigge and I'm using a Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush to pick that up and I'm just going to, because I've not set this base I'm, I'm setting it with the colour I'm just going to tap the colour where I want it to be I'm just going to run this all the way along my lid. And slowly build the colour up. Because if you don't set your lid with translucent powder, you get much brighter colour payoff. Which obviously is what I want. And once I've set the lid, I can then start doing a little bit of blending. If you're blending towards the eye, do circular movements in this direction. And when you're coming away, reverse the direction because what that does is it moves your lid around. So it stops you from getting those uh, telltale white stripes that show that you're old and you're. Uh, Eyelids are not as taut as they used to be. So I'm just going to buff the edges and just soften those up a little bit. I'm holding the brush right at the end so that I get as little pressure on my eye as possible. When I first reviewed this I did say that I wished that this Sigue shade was just a little bit deeper. But that really is the only thing that I would change about this palette because when you get humble on the eye as well, if you're packing it on like I am here, they actually look quite similar in tone. So I did say that I wish that Sigue was that little bit darker. But as I said, apart from that, it's an absolutely fantastic palette. Um, and Paulina made a point of everybody who had um, reviewed her palette if she made a point of looking for the films on YouTube and actually commenting on them and instead of having just like a standard thank you for buying my palette um, she obviously watched the films because on mine she said thank you for the feedback about Sigge and I'm like oh blimey she actually you know sat through probably had it on double speed bless her but she actually sat through and watched it so but Sigge is a beautiful shade I'm really glad it's one of the ones that came up now I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. Again, if you want, feel free to fast forward through. 
you can see initially you don't get a huge amount of payoff but that's because you're set you're setting the lid but you can see how beautifully it builds up and it does build up to be true to colour. Now with this eye, this is the eye that I'm blinding and it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital and because of that I've got very very deep creasing just here you can see that I get awful tiger striping there so I do sometimes have to actually pull the lid out in order to get the colour into those bits because sometimes doing circular movements like this will work other times it doesn't but don't pull your out like that unless you absolutely have to otherwise you will end up with uh, deep creasing and I can promise you I yeah, won't like it I'm sitting back and checking both eyes because I want to make sure that the shape that I'm doing is the same because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical unless you photoshop them that way and I don't do any manipulation to my images at all unless I've got an obvious snapchat filter on in which case you're going to see it's a snapchat filter I don't filter, I don't photoshop, I don't face tune I don't have any software on my camera look if I move around like this you don't suddenly see a filter coming off this is genuinely what you know a look that I produce with patience and practice you can produce yourself even if you are an absolute beginner I was just wondering that's better I just wanted to bring that bit up there just a little bit just to match this side I'm just gonna blend this out. I am really interested to see what colours other people have got. There are so many, as I said, I'm not going to start naming people because that's not fair to A, to the people that I don't name and B, like I said, if people join late because um, I'm recording this a little while before the film goes live because some people have actually ordered the Paulina palette this time round and uh, because they're not in the UK, they're having to wait for um, the palette to reach them, obviously. So I'm actually recording this. We've got a penciled in date at the moment, assuming everybody gets their palette in time. Um, and I'm certainly a few weeks before that, but that, that that's not a set in stone date, because obviously if someone hasn't had their palette or has only just received it and isn't well, for example, then obviously we're going to push it back so that everybody's film can go up at the same time which is going to be amazing I mean seriously you, you can just you know go to the playlist and start it and you'll probably have enough to you know if you're, if you're doing the housework stick it on the TV while you're cleaning or whatever or even better if you're ironing Flow us through to your TV or put your laptop up and uh, just watch film after film after film while you're ironing. I bet you the ironing goes by quicker than you think it will. Right, I'm just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth that I've got here. I prefer this to the um, colour switch that I used to use because I found that, particularly with very, very pigmented shades like Jeffrey's Blood Sugar, your clean all the colour off the brush but because the pigment is so strong it gets stuck in like the the fluffy the the gristly the, the gritty bit that takes all the colour off and uh, you end up with some of that pigment transferring onto your clean brush when you go in next time round. Right, this is clean but as you can see the green has rather stained the oopsie. Right, now I'm going to go into Friends, my favourite shade. Love this shade. And I'm going to literally just buff along the edge of this beautiful sigue. And just 
build up a nice bright top edge to it as you can see and obviously I'm going over this sigue so we're now actually getting three different shades which is exactly what I wanted I do normally leave sort of two or three mils between the top of the colour and my brow but I'm actually coming up to the brow here because obviously I took it up quite high doesn't matter I've still got space there for my brow highlight because I'm doing detail work here I've come right up close to the tip but I'm still not putting very much pressure on at all I'm still going very very lightly and, just... and now you can see I'm back down at the end of the brush again I really love this friends shade it's beautiful I'll very often just for a quick look I'll bung friends all over my lid and then buff either humble or sigue through the crease, a bit of mascara, and that's me out the door. Well, once I've done my base, obviously. Although on those days I tend to just do concealer and powder and that's me done. I am so loving these colours together. I love playing with this palette. It may not look very played with, but that's because like uh, Styles Hollywood Jessica, I'm one of those people that, that like to clean my palettes before I put them back away again. So they always look brand new when I'm so and, until I actually get a huge dent in a colour or if I have a damaged colour for example, you don't really notice that it's been used. But I like that because then when I come to pick the palette up and use it, it it feels like it's the first time I'm using it again. And it's just I know it's silly but but yeah, I mean, I actually follow quite a few Swedish YouTubers. Um, Paulina was actually the second Swedish YouTuber that I found, and I love, love, love the bright colours that she does. Um, I found Jessica when I put my palette collection up, because when you put a film up with certain tags as a creator, you'll then find similar films appearing in your feed of people that have put up similar tags recently. That's how I found Jessica. And through Jessica I found Linda. And then through actually through Paulina um, I found Marlin. And there was also, oh, good grief, I put it back. Um, there's another Angelica, which is, oh, my nose. Another one that I've followed regularly. I just, I love Swedish YouTubers, I'm sure there's more, but fibro fog moment has hit but yeah Paulina was definitely one of the OG Swedish YouTubers that I followed and her dog Sigge get so cute she has started to do some um, makeup and crime films similar to um, Bailey Sorian is it I think that's where she got in, in. That's where she got her inspiration from to do that. But um, I'm just going to dip back into Sigue and just deepen up here because I think we've lost some of the. Just make sure we don't lose that beautiful depth down at this part here. Um, Yeah, she was definitely one of the OG ones, and I just love the beautiful bright colours that she does. Mind you, all of the Swedish YouTubers seem to do super, super bright looks, which is absolutely amazing. I love it. I love the fact that 
I mean, there's probably Swedish YouTubers that don't, but I seem to have struck lucky and found all the Swedish YouTubers that actually like colour, because regular viewers will know I'm not frightened of a little bit of colour, even though I am in my forties. Who cares? If you want to wear colour, wear colour. It's your face. People haven't got a look at it if they don't like it. I'm really going to have to give this brush a deep clean. <laughs> um, I have got fallout, that's partly because I didn't tap the brush off. And partly because my eyelids are not 22 anymore. Right, I'm going to go in with... It's another Royal Lang Nickel Chic Pro, but this is the eyeshadow brush. I don't know why I'm doing it like that, you can't see that probably, can you? There you go. Okay. And it's slightly more oval rather than being rounded. And I'm going to go into Aubergine. And I'm going to pack that through my crease. Little tiny backwards and forwards windscreen wipe movements. Just to build the colour up. Obviously if you've moved your crease you need to follow the line that you've created. I'm just going to run that through and deepen the crease up. I always put a deeper colour through the crease because deeper colours recede. So if you have had to create um, a new crease for yourself, it will still give the illusion that that bit of your eye is falling backwards. So you'll still have the effect of it looking like you've not created a, a lid, if that makes any sense. Right, I've packed some colour on the brush because I just want to blend these edges out. So I'm going to do tiny, tiny circular movements, but I'm not going to go up the eye at all. I'm just going to do it along that line that I've laid. So I just want to soften the edges just a little bit. And then pack a little bit of colour on this inner corner as well. I'm thinking of doing actually a halo eye. I haven't done one for a while. I'm just going to pack a little bit of colour on the inner part of my lid there. Hmm, I like. I'm just going to build this colour up a little bit more. Really floof the edges out. I'm having to tip my eye back this side because obviously if, if I close this eye this one sees nothing so not a lot of makeup happens um, but on the other eye I'll be able to show you with the eye shut so if you're struggling to see what I'm doing panic not the other eye will give you much clearer view of what I'm doing just deepen up this outer corner here And now I'm going to do the same thing the other side. Now, if you have got deep set eyes like I've got, you are actually best off doing the initial waggle with your eye open. Because then you catch both top and bottom lid. So you can actually, you get, you get less fallout as well, which is, is nice. I mean, I've not done my base yet, so... Just pack some colour onto the brush. And I'm just going to do really tiny circular movements all the way along that line. A little bit of a vertical bounce to try and do those deep set lines I've got there. And then reverse the direction. And come back again. Patience is the most important thing when you're doing this. You know, don't don't be tempted to rush it because that's when you get mistakes. Um, or as Bob Ross would say, they're not mistakes; they're just happy little accidents. But just spending that extra couple of seconds on blending 
can make all the difference to the finished look. And let's face it, we all want to look good. Otherwise, we wouldn't be spending our time doing this. We'd be having an extra 30 minutes in bed in the morning. Not that I would suggest doing this every morning. You might get some funny looks in the office if you walked in with super, super bright looks. Mind you, to be fair, I probably would go to the office like this. I've got to pack some colour onto the outside edge. It's really difficult to get good purples, but Blush Tribe absolutely smash it. Their purples are some of the best that I've used, to be honest. Um, they apply well, they build well, they don't go patchy. And they don't fade, because you can get quite a bit of fading with purples, with a lot of, a lot of brands, but you don't get that with the Blush Tribe ones at all, which is awesome. Right, cleaning the brush off. I'm going to, have to put that in a deep wash as well by the look of it. Right, I'm going to get to, this is my, oh it's a Chic Pro one again. It's a spot concealer brush. And I'm going to grab a spray because I'm going to apply these shimmers wet. Now never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment because you will get hard pan and you will eventually bugger the shade up completely. So I always get the pigment onto the brush and then wet the brush and apply it to the eye and then dry the brush off completely before I go back in again. So I'm going to go into the shade Salma which is a gorgeous purple shimmer. Oh I love this colour. It's actually, this colour is actually exactly the same colour that I wore on my wedding day because I got married in a purple and black dress and my bridesmaids were in teal green so yeah. So I've packed both sides of the brush and now I'm just going to, this is just um, Eye Heart Revolution Vanilla and Coconut Spray, uh, I'm just going to dry the ferrule off so you don't get any water going down or any liquid going down and loosening the glue on the bristles. And I'm going to grab a little mirror and look down into that so I can see what I'm doing when I apply this to this eyeball. Well, eyelid rather. Um, yeah, you can use any liquid. You can use a moisturising spray like Max Fi Mac Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. You can use a priming spray, you can use a setting spray, you can just use plain water to be honest. All we're doing is wetting the pigment to increase the uh, reflection of light from it. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? As you can see I just did either side of the eye because I'm doing a halo eye. Halo, halo. I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire. You probably realise that from the amount that I tend to sing in my films. But I'm not monetised yet, so you know, I don't think they're looking at me to see whether I've got any. Mind you, not that me singing a couple of couple of words from a song is going to make you think I'm Beyonce. I've got Beyonce's butt if she sat on the photocopier and pressed in large before she pressed the uh, copy button. Right, with this side, because of the deep creasing, I do have to stretch it out, especially when I'm using shimmers, otherwise it ends up packing into the deep crease and then I get fallout through the day so I do have to unfortunately stretch that eye out. This eye I get a lot more 
movement and a lot of fallout with because it was pulled around so much when I was five years old so I didn't really start seeing the effect of it until I turned 40 and that's when I started to notice that this eye was a lot looser than the other eye and that I was getting more fallout from it and then when I hit 43 those super deep creases made their appearance how lovely of them right cleaning the brush off and now I'm going into Paulina which is this gorgeous hot pink it's actually a satin rather than a shimmer it's um, it's got a lot of colour pigment to it with a bit of shimmer particles in it so unlike a lot of hot pink shimmers where you don't really get the colour you really get the colour with this one but I think you can probably tell that let's get my mirror again for this eye and I'm just going to pop that right in the middle a little bit of fallout because I popped a little bit too much on the brush I think Take some of that pigment off and uh, re-wet it. I got excited and piled too much pigment on my brush, but I said, Ooh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that one. Yeah, that's better. The whole point of a halo eye is that you sort of line the lightest or brightest colour up with your pupil and it actually draws attention to your eyes rather than people looking at all of this they focus on your pupil so if you have unusual coloured eyes if you've got I don't know violet contact lenses in for example great way of drawing attention to them Don't pack as much pigment on the brush this time, and don't get so excited. Again, I always, always dry the ferrule off. Just literally, I hold it against my hand like that and twist it to wipe. And time to apply it to this eye. Such a pretty colour. There. Oh, I like that a lot. Right, I'm just going to pause you while I go and chuck some foundation on the face and do all those other bits and pieces and then I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So, you are going to see me instantly. I will see you next time I press the record button. And I am back. <clears throat> As you can see, I decided to go for green brows, so we kind of continued the trend of green at the top and purple at the bottom. So, let's continue with that. I'm going to grab the flat top brush that I showed you earlier. Now, I've really been struggling with eyeliner recently because my fibro has made my eyes very, very watery um, and it just it doesn't stay on, basically. It's as simple as that. So, what I've done is I've actually found a way of still getting that same effect without having to do a winged liner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up some of the aubergine, which is obviously the deep purple you put through here. And I'm going to link it up to the aubergine on the top and just run it along underneath my bottom lashes. And then I'm going to load some aubergine onto the brush and just stamp 
a really dark stripe just right at the edge here. You can only really see it when you're right up close, but from further back it does give that impression of pulling the eye out and up. So if you, like me, are struggling with watery eyes and liner just won't stay where you put it, well, there's a trick for you that could work. I flinch a lot when I do this eye because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision so I'm kind of relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder far too far away when I haven't got a contact lens in. Right, again I'm going to stamp just on the edge there. It's imperceptible unless you're up really really close. When we blend out the bottom lashes you need to stop here because if you carry it on up this wing bit you do lose the effect. But you can see when I sit back it does give the impression that the eyes are lifting up and out. Right, I'm going to use this brush. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I like it because it's flat on the top and chunky at the side. Um, and I think I'm actually going to pick up some Sigge because I don't really want to use either of the shimmers underneath my eye today. I'm just going to blend this green out with a tiny little bit of the Sigge shade just to soften it. My eye is starting to water this side already. It's like, really? I'm going to go out later. It's my best mate, well one of my best mate's husbands. Fall to you. A couple of mates that I'm super super close to and can't class them as best friends. And one of them, uh, her husband turns at 40. So it is his party this evening. I think this eye look will go really nicely with what I'm intending to wear. Hmm. I like that. I really want to use one of the shades out of here to do my brow, but I can't because it's not one of the shades that I pulled, unfortunately. But so I'm going to go into my drawer full of Colourpop and I've got this Super Shock Cheek in shade Perilune which has a green shift to it as you can see. Now this is, it's, to be honest, it's a lift, lift, lip brush, not a lift brush, a lip brush that I bought off of eBay probably about 10 years ago now. So I'm going to pick up some of this Perilune, pop that up under the brow for a brow highlight. Oh, that's pretty. I don't use these often because obviously being a cream they don't, they don't always fare well over foundation. I mean if you use, if you use a brush something like this with really really loose jaw fibres you can actually put it on over foundation without it lifting it too much so it is possible that's super pretty oh, I'm going to pop some in the inner corner And what I like to do with mine, you can just do the inner corner like that, but what I like to do is continue it along under the tear duct and just blend it in with the first bit of colour under the lash line there. Right, 
And I should do the same thing this side. Right. I'm going to pause you while I choose a highlighter because I'm not going to wear this on my cheeks tonight. Uh, it's going to get hot in that pub and it will then disrupt my foundation. So I'm going to choose a highlighter to put on my face. Um, I'm going to do some mascara, choose a lippy, do something with my hair, and I'll be back with the final look. I am back. Mascara. Sorry, I just had a bird fly so close to my window, I swear it was about to hit it. Uh, mascara is the Catrice Glam and Doll Waterproof Volume Mascara which is an absolute bang on dupe for Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. Uh, the highlight that I decided to chuck over my face is the Tribe Highlighter Volume 3 from Juvia's that my friend Kay sent me. And the lipstick is one of my Hourglass lipsticks in shade My One Desire. <clears throat> so, this is my tribute to Paulina and Blush Tribe using the Paulina palette. And this is the look that I've come up with, with the colours that were randomly selected. And now I'm going to keep it all in place with some a sleigh all day in my favourite scent, the coconut. Uh, you can stop there, and indeed most people would, but I'm a little bit extra, and I like a little bit extra. Ah, oh, smells like I should on a beach somewhere, sipping a pina colada. And the day I'm recording this, it's actually raining, so... But, there we go. Um, oh, I've got a discount for Gerard as well. All my discounts are listed in the description box, and they will clearly state whether I earn from them or not. But, there you go. This is my entry in the uh, Collabo Nation with the Paulina palette. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. Um, I hope once you've finished watching all of the collaboration films that you would like to come back and perhaps consider subscribing. Uh, I've got a lot of other films you can watch uh, if you still want to see a few to decide whether or not you were uh, like my personality and the way that I put my makeup on. If you are one of my 4F babies, however, you know what I'm about to say to you. It is time to go to the playlist, or the Google Doc if I manage to link that, and to go and indulge yourself with all of the other collaboration films. And please show every single person the same love and support that you, you give me all the time in my comments, regardless of the size of the channel. Oh, Lisa Lobotomy, that was the other Swedish YouTuber that I've been following. <coughs> Fibro fog, it eventually, it eventually hits me, usually at 3 o'clock in the morning, but thankfully today, before I actually finish the film. Yay! Right, that's quite enough from me. Enjoy the rest of the collaboration films. But now, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.